Welcome back. It is still the run-up. We're glad to know that you're still watching. We're taking this conversation back to where we started from, uh, talking about the, the road leading up to 2023 general elections. The questions are still the same. Are we ready to have that conversation uh, with us this afternoon? We have Dr. Uh, Dr. Law Mefo. Good afternoon and welcome. Dr. Mefo, can you yeah, hear us? Good afternoon. Thank you for hosting me. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, 2023 yeah, general elections. Uh, yes, let's continue. The 2023 general elections are very close. Uh, we keep getting closer to the D day. Uh, how do you, you know, uh, what's your perspective yes. to the 2023 general elections? Do you think Nigeria and Nigerians are ready for the elections? I think Nigerians um, are eager for the election. Uh, the situation is coming uh, from the political class, and uh, the reason is simple. They don't want to let go of power. And um, that is why they are facing so much violence you know, on the process. You can see all over the place, very exemplary misconducts uh, everywhere. You saw the experience of uh, the PDP in the uh, Dugri. You saw the experience also in uh, uh, Kaduna. You saw the experience of uh, ABC in uh, Plato. You saw the experience of Labour in uh, Abia in uh, Ebony. So the story is not just good. And if you listen to the edge of police, um, address uh, a world the best conference yesterday. He was very clear that uh, the threats are real and um, he, he, he pointed at the political class as the ones really perpetrating um, the violence they visited on uh, the electoral process. I neck, I think, is uh, getting ready. The body language of INEC is good. The um, chairman of INEC is insisting on the deployment of beavers. And um, if uh, we understand uh, what the beavers is supposed to bring to the table, we'll see why that uh, commitment of INEC to the uh, deployment of beavers is so fundamental. Because, um, you know, the bimodal uh, accreditation system, you know, uh, by use of beavers, means that um, if you are not accredited, um, with uh, beavers or by beavers, you will not be able to vote. That is very fundamental. It means that vote by proxy is out of the way, ballot box snatching out of the way, a uh, feeling of the, what they call um, incidents uh, from out of the way, and then the final uh, results after collection will have to be entered into the form EC8 and then uh, captured uh, by beavers and uh, transmitted to the portal or the server real time. This is very fundamental. I think that um, uh, what you may call um, the problem of reading will be reduced. Well, it's, uh, it appears the network is yeah, not very favorable for that. But he was making some really good points. It's unfortunate that the audio was not good enough. But in you, 2023. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem to believe that we are ready for yeah. 2023 because of uh, body language of some quarters, some relevant uh, uh, agencies that should be responsible for the 2023 election. But you are, sti are you still there? Bio. Yes, maybe we just uh, wrap it up on uh, on this. So, 2023, a lot of people have talked about it. Um, uh, Liborius talked about it earlier on, and even though uh, Dr. Mefo, yeah. we couldn't get much of what he was saying, but he was saying that a lot needs to be done. And, uh, and uh, apart from that, we're also talking about some other issues that just cropped up about the census and all that. So we'll just take a, a wrap up from you uh, about what you feel about these things we've been talking about today. 
Well, I, I, from what I've heard, Dr. Mayfair, actually, I, I thought he was saying that INEC has put things in place uh, because I heard him saying that the process of voting itself, which eliminates ballot snatching and all that, because you, you can't go and snatch. I mean, it's electronic. So what are you snatching? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe oh, the, the, the audio wasn't very, very clear. So I probably might not, not also have had clearly. Yeah, but it was really disjointed. So maybe we heard, heard wrong even. So and that's it. <laughs> From my, from but if you heard him better, um, uh, tell us what he said and what you feel about what he said. Okay, uh, I just I just summarized what I thought I heard. I, I thought I heard him saying that uh, he was actually particularly emphasizing beavers and saying that it's going to make it difficult for anyone to to, to go and snatch ballot boxes and things like that. Um, now I feel that we need there's something we need to keep in focus. Um, there's hardly a perfect election. As much as we strive to make sure we're going to get it right. Uh, and this is not an excuse for us not to do the right thing. I don't want to be misunderstood. Uh, I'm not saying an election not do what they still need to do between now and uh, February when the elections start. Okay? But what I'm saying is that even in the largest democracies or more experienced democracies, there are still issues. You had what happened in the U.S., uh, in the last election with former President Trump. You saw all, all that played out. You will have thought that could never happen in the U.S., right? We also have other countries where there are issues to do with uh, ballot stopping and all that. The, the question is always that, what was done to stop those things, you know, from influencing the outcome of the elections? And if those who attempted to perpetrate those things were held accountable, and, and, and we're made to face the full brunt of the law. So, so let's just keep this in perspective. Now, having said that, um, I, I feel that we are on course uh, for the 2023 elections. The whole country is looking and waiting for it. I mean, if something were to happen, and I hope not, not to, not to make the elections go ahead, I don't want to think of the consequences. People want this election. Everyone is looking forward to it. People have enthusiastically gone out to register and now they're waiting to cast their votes. So um, I think all we can do is to just continue to encourage uh, people to make the right choice, you know, and to, to forget about ethnic sentiments and all kinds of sentiments that do not make us pick the right candidates for the job. And people need to be asking questions. And people, who, people need to know who councillorship candidates are, local government chair, chairpersons are, who are these people, on which parties are they contesting. We need to be asking these questions, because especially the local government is the closest to every single one of us. Okay. Uh, well, um, the outcome of what just happened now is <laughs> funny. Uh, Dr. Mefo said something positive. I, let me talk for myself, I heard wrong. I, I heard something like he was saying we were not ready and mm -hmm. so on. Uh, but just, this just brings me to the dangers of not hearing well. The dangers of gossip, the dangers <laughs> of fake news. Yeah, because if you're telling somebody something and he doesn't listen well, mm -hmm. he carries that message to someone else the wrong message keeps and yes it keeps circulating and as it goes the, it waters down mm -hmm. and until it becomes an outright lie so in cases or in in the days leading to 2023 we have to be careful how we hear things where we hear things from and know how to use the information that we get otherwise you'll just be like me hearing one <laughs> thing when someone is saying something else Same i take another. that entirely as my fault even though the audio was not good enough but that's not an excuse and, and i would also say that uh even though we have a lot of work to do mm -hmm. uh i think the nigerian democracy it, uh, we are we are making progress moving forward but we're still I pretty do. young yes uh, and i think we should take it easy on ourselves uh, take the american democracy for instance i mean how old are they now they started way 246 before i'm sure so. there were days when they faced the kind of problems nigeria is facing today uh, but then because i'm saying this is not an excuse while we are taking it easy on ourselves i think we need to make conscious efforts to progress and be better 
And that starts with voter education. That starts with trying to make away with voter apathy. That starts with trying to make away with corruption and whatever negativity that we are facing today in the country. This is my small motivational point. <laughs> <laughs> well, 2023 is bound to be very, very interesting. And like I said, I'm optimistic it's going to be safer than people are thinking it's going to be. So get ready to go out and vote. Vote a candidate of your choice. Vote your conscience. Vote everything that... Vote because of Nigeria, not because of an individual or anything. Mm. Look at the Nigerian factor. Be patriotic about your voting. And like they say, seek ye first, wanting, wanting, and every other thing shall be added up to you. In this case, <laughs> <laughs> seek ye first the, the votes that you need to cast. And Nigeria just might be the kind of Nigeria you want. Until we see... Uh, each other again next week. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. And I am Uchechuku Onodo. Bye, oh, thank you. Bye, okay. Thank you. For thank, you. thank you very much. Bye for now. <laughs>